So this video felt like it's been a while coming, um, but I haven't been able to do this because of the injury that you may have noticed in my video about the um, the UD1603 that I did uh, earlier this year. Um, but thankfully, the it has healed and my hands are working, well my hand, it was just the one I injured, is working perfectly fine. Uh, I am scarred, but oh, well, there's not much I can do about that, but um, sorry. Well now I've recovered from my injury, I am now able to build my Tamiya Rising 5, so which I got from Jadlam uh, at the start of this year, just like I did with my UD1603. Uh, Jadlam, for those who don't know, is a really big model shop based in Glastonbury. And I again, I cannot recommend the trip enough. It is definitely worth going to Glastonbury alone just for that. Now the other reason why I haven't been able to build this is because I haven't actually got a servo or battery pack sorted for it. But I now have because I also made another trip to Jadlam earlier and I also bought a Spectrum Metal Gear servo. Um, now I didn't have to use a Metal Gear for this one but I only went for Metal Gear just because I wanted to. So anyway, um, I don't really know how else to open up this video. I just really want to jump straight into this because I want to get this thing over and done with. So the other thing I will be doing is I won't be doing a time lapse builds on this camera because I can't use external power. I'll be doing a time lapse on the GoPro. Maybe I'll jump back to the EOS in case something ever does happen during the build. And I want to touch up on a few things. Um, but let's just jump into the contents of the box. Okay, so diving straight into the contents of the box, let's see what we've got. Pop the box open like that. So we have the instructions, well, they weren't sitting at the top, they were at the bottom, but I just looked through everything before um, doing this to make sure I had everything. Bits and bobs there. Bits and bobs in there. We have our spoiler, tyres, back end, mechanical components and our um, motor in there main frame and the lids, wheels, little bits in there, ah stickers in there so and also it comes with a I think it's a hobby wing yeah it looks like a hobby wing ESC and the antenna pipe which we would have needed had we been using megahertz back in the day, but since we're using 2.4 gigahertz stuff, there is no need for this, but I'm probably just gonna stick this on anyway, just for show. Um, yeah, that's probably made a mess of it, but that's literally all there is to it. Now, normally it doesn't come with an ESC. However, Jad Lam were kind enough to include one with it. Um, the thing it hasn't included is the battery servo and the a transmitter of course but I do have a 2.4 gigahertz one coming along the way um, and it's going to be cobalt blue which will match the color of the rising fighter um, now I don't really want to sort of go on a bit and just because I'll end up saying stuff that even just makes no sense or say stuff I really shouldn't be saying um, probably just going to switch to the GoPro now and just start building the damn thing <laughs> Actually, just before I do start, um, this was the servo I ended up getting. It is a Spectrum S651 uh, steel and brass gear servo. Just take it out of the packet. Probably just focusing so you can see it a bit better. And there it is. Um, like I said before, I didn't have to put a Metal Gear servo in this, but the reason why I picked it over just standard nylon gears is just because I just really wanted Metal Gear in the thing. Got that the side, and let's just get on with building it. Problems.
I kind of lost track of how long the thing actually took, but I'd say five and a half hours later, it's together. It's, um, yeah, I made a few cock-ups along the way, uh, starting off with the servo because of uh, adjustments I had to make with some of the components included with it uh, to get it to fit into the mounting blocks. Uh, servo's fitted in, fits in really nicely. Uh, how to make... Uh, also a few adjustments around the back because I forgot to put the springs in around the, um, this part area down here. And uh, the other thing I haven't actually done yet, I haven't fitted the body shell on yet and I haven't fitted the electronics in yet other than the servo. Um, the driver I'm looking at getting an artist who I'm friends with to paint it because of some artistic liberty and some with their art style that I really hope that they'll be able to pull off something magnificent for the driver. I, I, if that's not the case, I'm not actually 100% on putting the driver in the car because I think it looks it looks kind of fine without the driver. Uh, but it's literally 9 minutes to 12am go, going into Monday and I haven't put... For, that's with the electronics. I... I need to put uh, a XT60 on the uh, power end because uh, it's got a Deans in and I do not like Deans. Uh, XT60s has got to be for me. Uh, I've also got to put some XT60s on the battery packs as well. They've got the standard Tamiya connectors which I've never been a fan of. And um, yeah, these are 5000 milliamp power packs so I should get a lot of driving time. Uh, now as for the motor end, I might replace these with JS, with um, not JSTs, uh, XT60s. Um, get some XT60s on there as well and probably put a cable tie in to hold it all together. Uh, just to kind of keep things on the safe side. Um, the other thing as well I need to do is change the switch. Because it's tiny and I need one that's compatible with the mounting area there. Uh, oh yeah, um, you may have noticed in the time lapse that I did curl up the servo cable. I did curl it up here as well. Um, the reason why I've done this is so, so it leaves less entanglement inside, uh, underneath the body. But I kind of need to stop right there. So I'm going to worry about the rest of the electronics tomorrow. I'm actually still waiting on a 
new radio gear that I've gotten especially for this. Um, and you'll see why I've got it especially for this, uh, if it does arrive in time uh, for next week when I'm going to be going away. But if not, then I'll have to see what I've got lying around. But uh, going into 12am, I really need to sleep, so I'll see you tomorrow. So I kind of wanted to do this thing where I just didn't want anything in the kitchen to be touched and I kind of wanted to do this transition from night time to morning and suddenly everything ended up being out of place because of things getting moved about in the kitchen. I told them not to touch anything in the kitchen and then it happened, uh, but oh well. But um, anyway, back to this. So the next plan is to take off the Dean's Connector on the ESC, which turns out to be a Carson ESC and not a hobby wing like I thought it was earlier. Um, once I've done that, uh, gotta get some XT60s on the battery. Gotta get this. Gotta get it on here done first, obviously. Uh, I'll see if I have a receiver kicking about, and then I'll do a few tests. I am clearly not wide awake right now. Okay, so before I do show the ESC, I have. Um, put XT60s on both of the uh, NIM battery packs. Uh, had to be XT60s over anything else because for me they're the best connector I've ever worked with and they're the best connector that I've ever used. Um, now the ESC here, uh, so we've got the XT60 on the power terminals. Um, one thing I've also done is as well, I did have a spare switch kicking around in the garage. Now what originally happened was I did have some heat shrink solder tubes that I took to the um, heat drive. I didn't think to take a photo of it or video before I covered it up with electrical tape because what happened was when I was doing that it um, it worked fine but it somehow managed to split the wire on the switch. Um, it probably, I, I'm guessing, I don't know if age plays a part on it, I don't know uh, but uh, oh well it happens and at least I have got a switch on it on the end. Um, I haven't replaced the connectors on the motor terminals yet because I just want to see how I get on with these. Um, but if I do have any form of issues, I will replace them with uh, XT60s. Now, how I'm going to be holding this on, I'm going to be using something called Mammoth Tape. I'll just see if I can peel uh, a bit off so you can just get a taste of what it's like. But it's, it's basically just really strong carpet tape. Uh, you can just about see it in there. Now, Gonna just basically put this inside the car and um, just see where it goes from there. <laughs> Alright, so I've got all of the electronics fitted in. Uh, so I've got the ESC just resting on the side there, like it does in the manual. Servo there, uh, you would have seen that earlier, obviously. Uh, the power switch, uh, I did manage to find one kicking about, but it was soldered differently because of the um, way it was wired up and, the, and what it's technically used for. Um, so this was how it was originally soldered. Um, so to make it compatible with the ESC, I ended up soldering it like this. Um, so yeah, because uh, that was how the switch on it was soldered on previously and I soldered it on like that. So I've got the sticker on there. I probably have to show that at a different angle, but sticker on there off and on. Uh, the battery, as you can see, is just sitting under there. So I'm using a, uh, 5,000 milliamp hour, 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride pack, which uh, fits in quite nicely. So it's a little bit of a job to get in, but uh, oh well. Now the receiver I'm currently using because my the radio gear which I have ordered for this hasn't arrived yet. So I'm currently using a Flysky FS2A receiver. Now I don't actually have any spare uh, pistol grip radios, and I don't have a Flysky pistol grip radio with me. So. Um, because of how late it is, I will put the body on the next morning and we'll show you the transmitter I will be using then. Okay, so I've got the body screwed on. Um, I haven't added the sticker on the roof yet because I'm, I'm not 100% sure if the driver will go or not, so I've decided to leave that off for now. Um, now the transmitter I'm gonna use with this, I don't, like I said earlier, I don't have any pistol grips on me at the moment and the only thing I can really use with it is this. Now this is my um, 
Flysky FSI4 and I bought six of these to use for stock combat robots which should, should be happening at a private event um, next year. Uh, more details on that will probably be on my Team Panoramic socials. Uh, but um, I haven't used stick radio on cars for quite a while, not since the Acoms Technic Plus, which I'm, I do want to find somewhere for something special I plan on doing with them. But because this is a Mode 2 transmitter and not a Mode 1, it means I have to use this side for the drive and this side for the steering. So I got, so because also the way I tend to drive combat robots, I'll just focus on the transmitter so it sees a lot better. I typically drive combat robots all on one stick, so forwards, backwards, left, right. So when I'm driving this, I've got to be careful I don't use this side to end up steering, uh, which I guess me being right-handed will also play a problem in that as well. So I have to use this for the drive and this side for the um, steering, which will take a bit of getting used to until I can, until I, until the transmitter does arrive. Um, now the transmitter, I was going to save this for another video, but the transmitter I'll actually be using is this. And you're looking at the colour of it, you can kind of see why I've bought that transmitter for this. And I have actually heard pretty good things about that one, so, um, but with the colour it was, and technically also just because it's blue, it just would have been rude not to, for me. Uh, now one other problem I did encounter is the battery. Now the battery sits underneath there, but because of the size of the pack, it was quite a bit of a job to get in. So it is, was a tight squeeze, it is a little bit of a job getting it in and out as well and the other problem is I actually cannot have the lids on because actually maybe I can just about uh, no I can't because you just about see it sticking out there that is as far in as the lid will go so I can't actually use it with this packing I might look into alternatives I'll see what else there is on the market uh, now the other problem if I put it you may be able to notice that it is leaning towards its right at the moment and that's issue with the it seems to be an issue with the front suspension for example if I lift it up at this point the left hand wheel is touching the surface but the right hand isn't if I just put it down yeah so you also just notice it at the back uh, just not see it leaning towards the right pick it up it's perfectly fine but then put it down Left wheel is touching the service, the right one isn't, and yeah, so I'll need to, it's, um, I'll need to take a look at the front and see if that is the front suspension that's doing that, but what I want to do now is just, I'm not going to show me driving it around on the kitchen floor, just for my sake, um, because of the transmitter I'll be using, I just need to get a bit of use to the controls, and then I'm going to take it outside for a bit, just for a test. Right, so I brought it outside just to test it for a little bit. I'm not really going to go crazy with it. Um, I might do a quick speed test and then just brake all of a sudden, but because I still need to get used to the way the controls are, I'm not going to go uh, absolutely mental with it. So I'll just turn the car on. So we've got a receiver light coming on, switch transmitter on. Beep from the motor indicates that it's connected. So here we go. The antenna's gone. <laughs> it's quite quick. It's definitely a lot easier to control I've got a wide open space. Well, I think that will do it, so I'll just take it back into the garage. So I'm finishing the video off in the garage because of the amount of noise that's going on in the rest of the house. Um, 
Now, considering the fact that this is my very first attempt at building a car kit, RC car kit, let alone a Tamiya kit, I'm pretty impressed with the job I ended up doing on it. Um, runs really well. There, there is a few um, issues I do need to sort out, mainly with the um, steering at the front, and uh, I need to get that aligned correctly. And also, the suspension on the front um, doesn't really seem to make that much effect on the driving and handling earlier, but um, probably just for the sake of my OCD, I might, I might just get it sorted out. Uh, and um, yeah, because I have owned Tamiya kits before in my lifetime, but that was back when I was six and I got a Tamiya Baja Champ for my sixth birthday and my dad ended up building any Tamiya kit that I ended up getting hold of. Um, yeah, so first ever attempt at building a Tamiya, it was quite a... Um, shaky starts but i'm very happy with how it turned out in the end the um now i said about the antenna that's obviously just for show only but i might have a way of fixing that down uh depends on if i can fit some receive wire in there because the receiver in there is temporary the radio gear i'm using is temporary like i said before i've got that new radio gear coming soon so i will definitely be using that with this because i've got like the color coordination with that transmitter being blue and um yeah so the two will go together perfectly but um i think i've just about said everything i can mother f anyway thank you so much for watching um i'll see you with uh whatever i get up to next which is probably going to be that um transmitter that i've ordered risk i've decided to make a separate video for that but until then thank you for watching and see you later